Thank you. To get some answers on our debt reducing super committee and the dispute that's costing the government $30 million a day, I want to bring in a man who knows the ways of Washington and has spent his career and, in fact, trying to change them. Ron Paul is a longtime GOP congressman from Texas whose 2008 run for president inspired a movement. You know it today as the Tea Party. Paul is winding down his congressional career but running once more for president. He joins me now on the telephone from Lake Jackson, Texas. Uh, thank you for your time, sir. I want to start with the debt deal and the big decisions that you and your colleagues decided to put off. You write today that balancing the federal budget isn't as hard as most people think. What do you think is the secret? We have to just live within our means and live with our income like people are supposed to do it. But, you know, what really is difficult is the semantics are so bad because everybody's talking about cuts and why didn't we cut this and did we cut this much and set up this super commission, we're going to cut some more. No place have we ever discussed any cuts whatsoever. It's always cuts in the proposed increases. So this, this is a difficulty for a person like myself who actually wants to have cuts. But you can't have cuts unless you change the attitude about the people, what they want from their government. If they think we have to be the policeman of the world and you can't challenge the entitlement system, there's no way that we can do this. Default is inevitable. And I think the only argument about the default was whether it would be by deflationary per, uh, pressures by just not sending out the checks or what we're doing today. Everybody opted mm -hmm. for uh, just printing the money. So the, the default is coming. We liquidate debt by printing money and having a devalued currency. And I think that's what the gold is telling us today. We're going, we went with the option of, of the printing press rather than actually facing up to the fact that we are bankrupt. I know that you voted against raising the debt ceiling, and you also believe that a freeze in spending would be better than making these cuts at all. Is that correct? Well, yes, I would actually have cuts, but uh, since nobody's about to do that, why don't we just settle for freezing it? Give everybody what they got last year. But, you know, it seems like that would be an easy sell to the American people. It wouldn't be so threatening. Now everybody says, well, they're going to slash, you know, all these entitlements. But mm -hmm. they're not. They're just cutting what the proposed increases are. But, you know, even if they talk about cutting the military, they get hysterical. But they're not cuts in the military. They're actually cuts in proposed increases. So, you know, it takes about four or five years. If, we'd have cut frozen, if, we, if we had frozen the budget about five years ago, it would have been balanced right now. So what that about this? Is one thing. The other thing you could do if you're so brave as to actually cut something, all you need to do is cut 1% of the budget and do it for about five years and you'd get to a balanced budget. What about this super committee? I, I take it you're not a fan. Would you join this super committee and be a part of it if, if asked? Well, I'm not going to be asked. I never even thought that through, but it's a totally unconstitutional committee, so I would have my reservations. I just, I think Why that is it is unconstitutional? reneging on our responsibilities and giving it to a small number of people, authority that the Congress should have. So, but this is a trend that we've been going through for a long time. We always deliver uh, more authority to the executive branch and certain commissions and taking the responsibility away from the Congress. I think it's very, very dangerous. Um, and, what are you uh, concerned the super committee will think, fast track? I think it's um, the wrong way to go, so I doubt very much if they I know they will never ask me, and I doubt very much if I'd want to serve on something like that. Uh, I also want to ask you about this, uh, just this tiny dispute that apparently has now uh, 4,000 workers uh, at the FAA furloughed. The federal government isn't collecting more than a billion dollars now in taxes from uh, the FAA. Uh, the administration certainly thinks uh, that you and your colleagues should go back to work and figure this out. I want you to listen to a soundbite here and then we'll talk about that. We've heard a lot of great speeches from members of Congress about creating jobs. Uh, they talk the talk, but they have not walked the walk. Their speeches ring very hollow to 4,000 FAA employees who are furloughed. Their speeches about jobs ring very hollow to 70,000 construction workers who are not working right in the middle of the construction season on construction projects all over America. Congressman, how is it that you now have 74,000 workers who are not collecting a paycheck, yet Congress is on vacation? How did this happen? Well, it's part of the process, and it's the uh, inability to admit that we're bankrupt and we do have to cut. The, the House did pass a bill recognizing the fact that 
some of these smaller airports are nothing more than boondoggles, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, that are being spent, you know, per trip by these airplanes going in. So it's far from a market-oriented program. And uh, the Senate could have passed it, but it would have been uh, passed it, and it would have been more conservative and maybe backed off of some of these programs that aren't paying it, that they're just draining, uh, you know, the economy. So it's not exactly that the Congress wouldn't do anything. It's the Senate that hasn't done it. But uh, then again, uh, any time there's an attempt, everybody's screaming, cut back, cut back. So they find something where there's real waste and, and we shouldn't be overspending in certain areas. Then the special interests come in and they yell and scream and demagogue the whole issue. So nothing happens. So sure, the Congress is inept, and I complain about it all the time, and I'm voting against all that. But the special interests are part of the problem, too. Even, if, even like Paul Ryan made an attempt to propose something, I didn't vote for it because I didn't think it was enough. But he got, you know, uh, really hit hard for this, like, oh, you can't do this. So the people whose uh, programs are being cut come back in, and this is why this is going to be very, very tough, and this is the reason why I don't predict we're going to get this under control. It's going to continue, and we're going to continue printing money, and it's going to stop by economic law, which means the dollars won't work. And that's what we should be concerned about, not some of these uh, technical factors. Well, I think the people who are furloughed right now are certainly very concerned about this. You heard the administration there, Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, saying Congress should come back to work and figure this out. You're running for president. Would you want to bring Congress back? For this, um, I think if we could have accomplished it before, uh, if, if we, uh, I think if pressure should have been put on the Senate to pass the bill. All right, uh, Congressman Ron Paul, appreciate your, your time and uh, your insight into these issues. Uh, we always enjoy having you on the program. Thank you very much.